Hello and welcome to a session of data interpretation. In this session, we shall discuss or we shall rather see a caselet. What is a caselet? Let's first go back to data interpretation. What is data interpretation? Now, data is represented in an organized format which is easy to read and understand. Now, to interpret that data is called data interpretation. In caselet, it is slightly trickier you will have to first of all read through a caselet which is nothing but two to three paragraphs of intense condensed data then try to understand it or organize it in form of a table or whatever seems possible in a question in an exam situation table seems to be the best option so you have to organize that into a table or anything that you feel fine quick enough to solve and then go ahead and solve it Let's look at an example start. Read the following case and answer the questions that follow. Bihar and Orissa are the most deprived states of India. Uh, I don't think I can actually decipher much out of it. There is no concrete data here or figures here. So let's keep it aside. Let's go ahead. While they contain one fifth of India's population, they almost they have almost one third of India's illiterates. So they have one fifth of India's population. So let's start tabulating. So let's make a column of India and then let's make a column of Bihar and Orissa. So India, suppose the population is X, Bihar and Orissa will be what? One fifth, so X by five. For illiterates, let's put another row. So illiterates, India has Y, Bihar and Orissa will have one third of that, which means Y by three. Let's go ahead. In 1998, only a small fraction of Orissa and Bihar's population was literate versus 85% of Kerala's population. Now, only a small percentage or small fraction does not give me any figure. So, let's leave that. But we get to know that Kerala's literacy rate was 85%. So, we add another column of Kerala and row of literacy and would put 85%. Let's go ahead. More than two thirds of the births are not attended by any medical facility. Where? I don't know. So let's write it separately down in terms of bullet points that two thirds births are not attended by a medical facility. Let's move ahead. One tenth of the infants born in Orissa and Bihar die in infancy. Now, one-tenth of the births die in infancy. So, infant deaths are 10% in Bihar and Orissa. So, another row of infant deaths and we put 10% there. An equal number die before reaching the age of 5. Okay. So, it is not equal percentage, it is equal number. Now, what is the difference? Had suppose there been 100 kids, 10 die out of infant deaths. So, there are 90 left. An equal percentage would have mean 9 died, but an equal number would have mean 10 died. So, an equal number. So, up to 5, we say 10% of the original, right? So, that is what it is. Let's go ahead. Almost 90% of the under 5 deaths are due to malnutrition. Again, uh, I actually cannot put it on the table. So, let's put it on a bullet point. 90% under 5 deaths are due to malnutrition. Let's go to the next para. From amongst the lucky kids who have survived for the first five years, one third of them work as child laborers. So, again, I don't know uh, where exactly this is for because it is not written Bihar and Orissa and it is not written India. So, let's take in general for India that one third of these survivors are child laborers. Let's move ahead. And only half of the remaining are sent to school. Half of the remaining which means that another one third are sent to school, right? Let's go ahead. Of those who attend classes, only 40% are able to reach standard 5. So again, another row adds standard 5. So 40% of school going reach standard 5. Let's move ahead. In India, 30% of the children under 16 work as laborers. 30% of the children under 16 work as laborers. So, another row under 16, 30% comes in India. Odisha and Bihar contain one third of the child laborers in India. 
So under 16 labor, which is child labor, Odisha and Bihar is one third of India. So we put it on the Odisha Bihar column. India has the largest population of child labourers, which is one fifteenth of its total population. So we add another row which says one fifteenth of the total population of India is child labourers. Okay, good amount of data till now. Let's look at the last para. In Odisha and Bihar, out of hundred children enrolled in school, thirty-two are girls. So girl students in school are thirty-two percent enrolled. So at the beginning. Out of the hundred who attend start standard ten, only ten are girls. So at standard ten, girls are only ten. Now let's understand. This is only for Odisha and Bihar. Huh? Only thirty-eight out of hundred Indian women are literate versus fifty-seven percent in males. So there is a female literacy which is thirty-eight out of hundred, which is thirty-eight percent, and male literacy is fifty-seven percent. Now let's go ahead. Even in wealthy states such as Punjab. girls suffer malnutrition seven times more than boys do uh, i don't know how to put it so let's keep it here only uh, in an exam situation you can always highlight such things because that is a point which you have not used in the table the total population of the country was 90 crore in 1998 and the ratio of male to female was 10 to 9 so total population is 90 crore so let's put it in bullet points and all india male is to female ratio is 10 is to 9 okay now we've come to the end of this paragraph and we have a lot of data with us so let's understand we have odisha bihar in one column india in one column okay kerala we had put but i don't think we have data much for it whereas on the rows we have population illiterates literacy infant deaths up to 5 child labor school going 5 standard 5 under 16 labor girl students standard 10 girls male literacy and female literacy so we have so much data for us now let's start attacking the questions let's have a look at the first question according to the information provided what percentage of the infants in orissa and bihar attend standard 5 let's look at the data if 100 are born 10 die at infancy level so 90 survive an equal number die at the till the age of 5 so people who reach the age of 5 is only 80 one third of them are child laborers and half of the rest which is again one third go to school so 80 upon 3 will go to school and out of these 40% reach class 5 so 80 upon 3 into 40% which is nothing but 2 upon 5 will give us what 10.66 so you see how much easier it is once you have tabulated the data to find that data and go back and solve it let's look at the next question the number of child laborers in india is 1998 is okay a uh, child laborers in india in 1998 somewhere we have okay let's look at the bullet points population of india is 90 crores and 115th of india's population is child laborers So 90 into 1 by 15 will give us what? 115 into 90 is 6 crores. So 6 crores is the number of child laborers in India in 1998. Pretty made simpler, but then it's all because we tabulated the data. Let's look at the next question. In Orissa and Bihar, out of 100 born, how many children work as child laborers? Now 100 are born, 90 survive infancy, 80 survive till the age of 5. So child labor is what? One third of the remaining. So 80 upon three. This is nothing but 26.66, approximately 27. So that is the right option. Let's look at another question. What percentage of girl children enrolled in school reach standard 10th in Orissa and Bihar? Now looking closely, in the previous question we had link from infancy birth to infancy, infant deaths to five years to standard fifth. there is no relation between standard 5th and standard 10th so here it will be impossible because data is not given so clearly insufficient data is the reason behind this question so i cannot answer this question let's go to the next one in 1998 the literates in kerala exceed the literates in up and bihar by now where does up come from we didn't discuss about up anywhere so again like this previous one insufficient data we cannot answer this question let's go to the next one 
the number of literates in India in 1998 is now I know the population of India which is 90 crores I know the male and female distribution which is 10 is to 9 I know the male literacy and female literacy which is 57 percent and 38 percent so I can do it right 90 into 10 upon 19 which is males into 57 percent plus 90 into 9 upon 19 into 38 percent which will give me what somewhere close to 43.2 crores that is the right option let's look at the other side how do we do it in the different manner can we find out the average literacy or the weighted average literacy if you recollect something that we learnt in allegations and mixtures we can find out the weighted average between male and female literacy which is 57 percent and 38 percent to be 48 percent now if we directly multiply this 48 percent with 90 crores we can also get 43.2 percent 43.2 crores so there are two ways of finding this answer let's look at the next question the number of illiterates in Orissa and Bihar in 1998 is almost let's go back to the table number of illiterates in Bihar and Orissa which is the second row will give us what y by 3 which is one third of India's illiterates the previous question we found out literacy or literates in India which was 43.2 crores so illiterates are how many 46.8 90 minus 43.2 so the number of illiterates in Odisha and Bihar will be one third of this. So that will be nothing but 15.6 crores. It makes it so easy to answer these questions once we have the tables or the organizing in place. In caselets, the most difficult task is organizing. Once you do it, you will make it faster. Else, for every question, you will have to go back, refer, find the data, which makes it, first of all, time consuming. Second, you are more error prone. So be careful and invest some time in organizing data. It will make your life easier and accuracy higher. All the best.